Hello Internets! Today we're going to tune this CNC machine. Tuning is a process of making sure that your CNC software's definition of a certain distance matches your CNC machine's physical definition of a certain distance. Oftentimes, while configuring your CNC software, you'll do math to figure out exactly how much rotation equals a certain amount of linear distance for each axis. You'll then usually test that with a dial indicator. You take your dial indicator, move the CNC a certain distance, and compare that measurement with what the CNC software says. That's a great way to handle small motion as a dial indicator can usually handle about an inch of motion. More expensive ones, maybe two inches. For macro motion, you might use a ruler. Now, a ruler is a great idea, except then it relies on your eyeballs to make sure you're accurate. Now, I don't know about you, but my eyeballs are not good to tell a few thousandths of an inch. Today, we're gonna to tune this CNC machine using gauge blocks to make sure we're incredibly precise on our tuning at distances at more than an inch. So follow along. Ah, the gauge block. A tool of any machinist, and in the case of this hack, a tool used to tune his CNC machine. Gauge blocks are precision ground and lapped to specific thicknesses. In our case, we'll use a few of the larger gauge blocks to create an 8 inch distance that is incredibly accurate. Here's what you're going to need for this project. You're going to need a piece of stable wood, like a piece of plywood, that is long enough and wide enough to create a 10 inch slot as thick as your gauge blocks. I used a quarter inch bit to cut that out. You're going to need a tooling ball. Tooling balls are really important and I'll have a link in the description of the one I used uh, and why we used it. We'll talk about that later. You're also going to need some magnets, or I needed some magnets, to use with my touch probe. This is just to allow the touch probe to stick to my gauge blocks. You're then you're going to want a 4 inch gauge block, a 3 inch gauge block, and a 1 inch gauge block. If you happen to have two 4 inch gauge blocks, that works as well. Just my kit came uh, with those. Now let's talk about the plan. Let's cover the plan. Let's start with something important to understand. Your CNC controller does um, some number of steps per uh, unit. For the purpose of our conversation, that's going to be steps per inch. All right, so we're going to talk about steps per inch when we're doing tuning. All right, step one, you're going to make some type of slotting. That slotting is going to be the length of the gauge box you want to test. In my case, longer than the length of the gauge box you want to test. And in my case, um, I did 10 inches by 10 inches. Maybe I did nine, something like that. The width is going to be the width of your gauge blocks. So whatever that is, that was like point, point 0.376 for me. My gauge blocks were actually plus or minus point oh oh, uh, sorry, oh two, about two hundred seven inches. Uh, this is not a certified measurement. Um, gauge blocks only certify one measurement, so um, their 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 thickness is not a factor. Their their width is not a factor. Only their length. So if we look at a gauge block. Um, they only certify one measurement. So if there's our pretend gauge block, they might certify just this measurement at two inches. And they're going to say it's, you know, we know for sure it's 2.000018, or maybe that's one, two. And that number of O's you get here, so maybe it's 0000001, that or two. The number of O's there, that's dollar signs. That's the quality of gauge blocks you have. Uh, mine are within, mine are measured to the millionths, which is plenty good for me. Um, and so I'm plenty happy with something that's, you know, a couple of millionths or a hundred or, or even 18 or 20 millionths over. I, nothing I can do is anywhere near that. My CNC machine can't even do better than 0.00015. Um, because it's uh, 0 0.9811 inches per 6400 steps. If you do that math, you get 0 0.00015. That's the absolute highest resolution I could ever possibly get. So being off for a few hundred, 
totally lost in the wash. All right, we covered step one. Um, step two, you're going to get your gauge blocks and you're going to go ahead and like if this is your spoiler board, you're going to, there's your jig you just cut. You're going to take your gauge blocks and you're going to stick them down on one of the axes, whichever one you're going to test. And you're going to stick them down and you want to make sure the, the, the most important thing in this whole thing is these gaps here need to not exist and this needs to be relatively flat. Um, you could have a tiny cosine error here if your gauge blocks are um, at an angle. Um, you know, if they're set at an angle, you could get a cosine error testing here to here. Um, as long as I don't think you would, you would, it would, it, it, cosine errors, it's something that looks visually straight or incredibly small. Again, we're talking about being able to see things here. So I think, you know, even if we have a cosine error, it's, it's going to be measured in the tens of thousands. As long, as long as this looks very nearly square to your, to your CNC, um, you should be fine there. And again, the most important thing is you don't want any air gaps here. If you can see light coming through these guys, they're not tightly together. That's not one thing. Um, and then what you're going to do for step three, for me, for me, step three was my my touch plate had a bolt in the bottom of the touch plate. So I want to take my magnets and stick them to the bottom, to the mat, to the to the bolt. So what that allows me to do is take my uh, take my touch plate. And uh, you know, here's the here's my gauge blocks, my beautiful drawing of gauge blocks. I can just attach my my touch plate right to the gauge blocks and basically complete that circuit for probing because we're going to use Mach force probing to do probing uh, to probe all this. All right, so let's go to step four. Step four, we're going to go ahead and put in that ball screw. Now I talked about the ball screw earlier. Um, uh, sorry, the um, tooling ball. So a tooling ball is a tool that is a pretty gosh darn precise thickness. In my case, I got um, one half inch and it was plus or minus two tenths. And I can tell you on my micrometer, it was like a hundred thousandth, according to micrometer. Um, I got anywhere from, when I, I tested all the way around it, and I got anywhere from um, 500001 to 0.499995. So it's gosh darn accurate. I think that maybe there's one, one less digit there. And I'm pretty sure that digit was there. It's, it's pretty ridiculous on my micrometers. So that's super accurate. That's where we're having, that's where we're using that. So we have a very, very accurate half inch and we have very, very accurate lengths. And between the two of them, we have a very, very accurate scenario. We're gonna say it's plus or minus half a thou. That's my not a scientist guess is that when we're said and done, we're gonna be able to say that the machine is accurate at this length to plus or minus half a thou. All right, so now we're gonna run the program. So. The program is in is in Mach 4, but here's what the program kind of looks like it'll do. So here's my CNC, here's my plate, here's my here's my gauge blocks. I'm going to um, make sure my ball is on the center of these gauge blocks, and I'm going to make sure that whenever it drops and tests, it goes below the center of the ball on the tooling ball. So keep that in mind. So you're gonna start your tooling ball here, right? And the tooling ball is, it's gonna move, when you run the program, it's gonna move from the center down and it's gonna to touch this side. So it's gonna to touch it with this, this side's gonna to touch there. When it's got that touch, it's gonna to come back up, go back across the other direction, come down and touch this side. So that's touching that side. Well, if you think about it, the tooling ball is um, a half inch thick and there is no 
Um, there's no way to tell Mach 4 how thick your probe is. So what there is for different things. For this use, there isn't. Um, so subsequently, whatever measurement Mach 4 is going to give you, it's going to give you the thickness of the tooling ball plus whatever you're measuring. So in our case, our tooling ball is half an inch thick, uh, half an inch round, and we're measuring 8 inches. So we're really measuring 8.5 inches. Lastly, we do the math. So the math is pretty straightforward. We think we're going for 8.5, right? We think we're going for 8.5, and we get some other measurement from Mach. That's a horrible measurement, but work with me here. So that's gonna equal, we'll just call it delta. It's really some percentage. You're going to take that delta percentage and you're going to do your steps per unit times delta equals you know some new number that's your new steps you're going to then test that setting again and you're going to come back over to five with a new measurement and at some point you're going to get to some number that is close enough for you um, that is up to you as to what is sufficiently close enough on an 8.5 inch test once you've done this in one axis let's say you you do this in um, you do this in up here in step one you do it in the first axis doesn't matter which axis you do it in one axis you're then going to repeat the process for the other axis um, now you might be wondering, but Josh, what do I do about my, my z-axis, my height? And the answer to that is, I don't know yet. You know what, seriously, if you have thoughts on that, uh, put them in the comments. I'm still thinking about how I wanna, how I wanna tune my my y-axis or my z-axis I haven't come up with a good answer to that so I'm totally up to hearing what thoughts you guys have all right cover the plan uh, why don't you watch me do it So let's talk first thing you're going to do. Um, I'm going to speak from Mach 4's perspective. And I'm sure that's similar in Mach 3. I'm currently loaded the WX router set screen. So we're going to change that to a different screen set. You go view, load screen. You can get your screen options. These are the default screens. And the features I want are in WX4. So let's open that up. It's going to load the screen set. WX4 is not substantially different then the router it just gives you more features actually it's kind of nice um, you get a really nice uh, diagnostic screen and here's what we care about the probing screen and specifically the probing screen you have a bunch of things you can probe you can probe a single surface you can probe corners you can probe surfaces this is what we care about we're going to be using the outside probing a lot so we're going to do two operations the first operation we're going to find the center of our gauge blocks um, on thickness just so that our ball is always in the center of the gauge block and we'll do that and so if we're measuring our y travel we will measure x to find the center then we'll do the y travel across the y um, so this is what your screen will look like initially now you see what the screen looks like we're going to go ahead and set up that first pass 
Um, I'm going to show you the first pass and then I'm going to show you what results we got in mock and how I changed things and then I'll show you what the resulting uh, math showed up when we got it tuned perfectly. It took us about three tries to get it dialed in. So uh, all right, let's let's uh, let's show it. All right, so the first thing we do here is we go ahead and center on the, gan uh, on the gauge flags like I mentioned earlier. So we're going to do that real quick. These videos are running at 5x by the way. Uh, once we've done that, we will then change to our target size. Now, that's a, a notice here. I don't really care what this width is. You'll see over in the corner where it says um, size slash angle 0.08. When I hit nil, that's going to start doing. I don't. I don't. I I fiddled with the numbers to get this to run properly. I don't really care about those numbers. What I care about is this end result number when it's done probing, which it'll be done here in a second because I'm again running this video at a at 5x. So once it's done probing, we'll see the number it comes up with and one we care about is at 8.4392. That's what the DRO in Mach 4 calculated. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that number, uh, 8.4392, and we're going to divide that by 8.5, which is our target number, right? That's going to give us our ratio that we're off. So we were off. We were we were 99.2 percent accurate. Um, now we're going to go to our motors. Now this is the dual gantry, so I'm going to do both motor zero and motor one. I'm going to take the number of steps that we thought we were using, and we're going to copy that, and we're just going to paste it into our calculator as a multiply. <clears throat> so we're going to multiply it by our ratio, 0.92 percent, and that's going to give us a new steps. And we're going to copy that step count into both of the gantry motors. Very important to do it in both. Hit apply between each screen. I'm not really sure if you can stack the motor, so I always hit apply. And we're going to apply there. Click OK. So that's our new number. Now that we have our new number, we need to go ahead and rerun the test. Great. All we have to do is press measure X again. So we're going to click press measure X. And I'm going to show you kind of a side view of what that ends up looking like. <laughs> Drum roll, please. What is the end result of that? What happens when it really happens? Let's let's see. Let's make a drum roll. Ta-da! That's amazing. Exactly. The DRO thinks it's exactly where it is. We could not have picked a better number. The crowd goes wild. In all actuality, guys. This is not a half bad way to do this. Um, if you guys have another way of approaching this problem, love to hear it in the comments. Please, as always, subscribe. And uh, by the way, yeah, if you guys have a way to pull off the similar trick with the the Z-axis, let me know because I'm I'm scratching my head on the whole Z-axis thing. Talk to you later. Bye.